Hello everybody in PED 415. We're just going to go over some lab material and get you on track for the rest of the semester and help you get a successful grade in this class. So if you look at your schedule and your syllabus, you'll see that you have three different types of grades for lab. Uh, you have three lesson plans and regardless if you've started this week or next week on your lesson planning, we'll, the goal is to have three total. You're going to have a 15% participation grade. That's your active participation in class, enthusiasm, uh, that's having social interaction, that's being inclusive, that's you know problem solving, stuff like that, adapting and modifying, doing you know what the book entails. So hopefully you've you purchased one of the required textbooks and you've been reading along and looking at the gym activities and looking at the swim activities because this is going to be your best guide in this class for lab. This is really going to help you uh, create motivational and uh, creative lesson plans for your mentee. So the individualized action plan is 40 percent of your grade. Uh, that is due on 12-3 and if you go to your modules you will see an individualized action plan module. Okay, So this should be available to you. If it's not, just email me you're going to click on the PDF here that I created and it's going to give you a pretty much good rundown of exactly what I expect on the individualized action plan. So if you've heard the term individualized education plan, it's exactly what it means. So we're creating a plan that's action based, uh, physical activity and nutrition. So we're creating a plan for our mentee to help them become long-term successfully healthy in whatever may um, whatever way or shape that may be whether that's uh, getting more <coughs> vegetables in their diet or decreasing sugar in their diet maybe it's getting a um, massage therapist if they have CP maybe it's getting them somebody who's certified in mobility training if they have CP um, if they have Down syndrome, maybe it's working on those ranges that they have that um, may um, result in an injury. So helping them create active range instead of passive range. And then individuals with autism spectrum disorder, maybe it's looking at different types of workout routines, uh, maybe different types of fitness activities that they can do long term. Uh, and then you have individuals with intellectual disabilities who may be more advanced and might get into, the, say, the Special Olympics. Um, not to say that individuals with Down syndrome, CP, or any other disability can't get into Special Olympics, but what will be best for this individual? So maybe it's starting. Maybe it's just getting into a uh, you know functional fitness program. Maybe maybe they're already at that level. Maybe they've had a really good um, history of health and physical education in their family so they're ready to go to the Special Olympics they're ready to take it to the next level but make sure it's from a functional viewpoint so don't just um, tell me you want to take someone who's um, you know never squatted in their life you know to have them front squat you know 200 pounds by the end of this semester or by the end of their individualized action plan if that is the case hopefully they've already been able to functionally do that you know with the right form and with the proper prerequisites. And if that's also the case, you're making sure that the form is correct and they're not just um, putting up as much weight as possible. So you have to look at things as, as a functional viewpoint. Case description, you're gonna create a taste, uh, case description. It include the name, age, ethnicity, height, weight. We have a scale in the downstairs equipment room and we have a tape ruler in the upstairs equipment room. So if you wanna get those out, during your lab, we can set those out right in the gym next to the door, and you can be self-responsible for that. You can get these statistics from the teacher or measure them during fitness or during your closing activities. So for example, maybe before you go swimming, you can get their height and weight. Uh, this is gonna give you their BMI. And so your case description you know, may include their BMI. Uh, let's just say you wanna include that because you plan on focusing on the BMI. Uh, if maybe the BMI is not an issue, maybe you don't um, really focus on the BMI. So it just depends on your mentee. Uh, you want to have likes and dislikes, interests and behavioral reinforcements. So pretty much what motivates them or what stimulants do they respond to, be respond best to. So is it clapping? Is it balloons? Is it uh, maybe you're putting um, 
bells inside of a balloon if it's somebody who um, reacts to stimuli in you know in a long-term fashion meaning like if they're not reacting say if I say hey, give me a high five and it takes them about 20 seconds and they give me a high five but what if I grab a balloon with a bell inside and shake it they might be more likely or mo more motivated to reach their hand out so what motivates them even at um, it lower levels, middle levels, and higher levels of thinking. So who are they friends with? Who hangs out with them? Who are they with most of the day? You might say, um, you know, this individual is uh, typically with a caretaker or a paraeducator or their teacher. Um, or you might say they're really friends with so-and-so. They, they get along with these two people or who they talk about their brother. You know, whatever, um, you know, they have social in their life. What makes them unique or any other positive way to describe them? So do they, um, well some of our mentees have YouTube channels. Some of our mentees um, really like uh, Star Wars. So um, tell me about uh, them in a couple paragraphs. Then you're gonna talk about the three learning domains, cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. So cognitive being thinking and understanding, affective being social interaction skills and communication and psychomotor deals with physical behaviors and what are they able to do uh, from a mobility, cardio, uh, swimming, jumping, you know, those types of skills. Uh, what are they able to do? They're used in education enhanced learning through the different ways individuals learn. So everyone has different ways they learn through all three domains. Some learn better in the psychomotor domain. Some learn better in the cognitive domain. Some learn better when they're working with others, you know, so it just depends. So the cognitive domain refers to the intellectual capacity of the individual, how they learn or understand, and what they do with the knowledge they gain. So the effective domain refers to the social interaction skills and mentee dem uh, that the mentee demonstrates, how they socialize with other people and their communication skills. The psychomotor domain ex examines the individual's ability to perform locomotor, objective control skills, manipulative skills, range of motion, balance, so anything that's physical related. Um, so if you're if you're trying to assess like if you don't know what domain is what here's a good document here which will tell you um, how to assess these and I have given you some examples so for example uh, use a movement vocabulary when describing motor skill performance performance task movement sequence so they're able to describe say oh they're skipping and hopping over there um, describe critical elements of complex motor skills written tests or worksheet, so maybe they're able to write down uh, a locomotor skill sheet. Uh, maybe they're not at that level. So you might have to look at some maybe lower grades, such as use mov movement vocabulary when describing motor skill performance. So maybe just understanding that we're skipping, understanding that we're hopping, understanding that we're jumping, and knowing the difference between the different skills. That would be cognitive. And we're always thinking about uh, those physical performances. How to assess student learning. So you can create a checklist, you can have performance tasks, uh, you can record the performance, you have journals, you can do different projects. Um, the effective domain, so respects others' personal space and boundaries. Um, they play fair, um, encourage others. So I'm just giving you some examples of each domain. Uh, for the psychomotor domain, with two hand throw, an eight inch playground ball uh, as far as possible. Um, throw five inch beanbag overhand as far as possible. So these might be some student learning outcomes or these could be some psychomotor domain objectives for your lesson plan. But you're gonna pretty much describe where they're at on their cognitive level, where they're at in their affective domain, where are they at in their physical performance. And so, when you write about the three learning domains, and when you see this later, you're going to write a couple paragraphs about the cognitive domain, a couple paragraphs about the affective domain, and a couple paragraphs about the psychomotor domain. And I want you to make them pretty. In, uh, I want you to independently uh, create them using and looking at some of the um, vocabulary and terms that are affiliated with each domain. Then you're going to write about preparing for inclusive physical activity. So how did you gather information regarding your mentee, teacher observation, teacher's observation, and explain the development of gathering information 
from your mentee. So did you have to ask them questions? Did you have to ask their teachers questions? Did you ask me questions? How did you get the information about the mentee? Describe this process. Uh, and then what assessments have you used to determine the present level performance? So are you observing? Uh, are you creating checklists? Are you creating a rating scale? Are you creating a student log after class? So how are you able to, uh, what are you writing in relation to those three domains after lab? If you're not writing anything, are you observing? And then you would just write observation and then you should be able to write about what you observed. If you had a checklist, you talk about the checklist. If you have a rating scale, student log, you can also do that. Your lesson plans will look like your student logs. How do you know what they have done? Did you remember this information through observation? Did you write it down? Did you write summaries after lab? Did you, um, did you determine these when writing? So um, now you may begin, you know, kind of assessing your mentee and looking at these different domains and seeing like what different tasks they can do in all three domains, okay, and seeing where they're at. And it's really important because that's how it's going to help you prepare for inclusive physical activity. And then explain how you collected the data. So you should be collecting some type of data. You, um, as I've told most of you, it's important to make a lesson plan so that you can, um, you know, obviously know what you're going to do, but you should also know how many reps they performed at each station or um, what angles of range of motion they were able to have. So not just doing an arm circle to do an arm circle, but to look at the degrees and range of motion. Individualized activity plan, short and long-term goal setting. So develop a long-term goal and a short-term objective for one of the activities or areas outlined in section one. Section one is pretty much uh, your case description and your, your domains. First, provide a statement of the present level of performance of the individual for this activity. Um, so it says to be obtained from instructor. So we should be talking in class about your short and long-term goal setting. And so each of you will talk to me about short and long-term goal setting, or um, you can talk to Ann Hughes, or you can talk to their teachers. So you have three people that you can um, help implement a short and long-term goal setting for them. Because we're all gonna have opinions, and we're gonna have some strategies, and we're gonna help you create this activity plan uh, to make it uh, seem log logical and reasonable. So for example, if you're working with someone with a severe disability and your long-term goal was for them to do something um, that would limit their performance, let's just say you wanted them to um, you know, do things that um, caused injury or harm, you know, obviously we would say, no, let's, let's look at a different short-term goal or a different long-term goal. So sometimes uh, men mentors mean well, but um, it's important to talk to others about goal setting, especially their instructors like uh, Ann Hughes, myself, and their uh, teachers. Their teachers are going to help with the goal setting. They, they know these individuals the best, so I think that they'll always have really good suggestions. Provide one long-term goal and two short-term objectives for these areas. So one long-term goal, uh, maybe it's getting them into the Special Olympics, maybe it's getting them into a once or twice a week mobility program, maybe it's getting them to a nutritionist once a month, you know, maybe maybe there's a long-term goal that you want them to have to help them be healthy long-term. And then sh sh two short-term objectives. So maybe it's, okay, you might be getting a long-term goal by having them, you know, meet with a nutritionist once a month. Maybe a short-term objective would be getting them to eat healthy in the next two weeks or to prove that they ate healthy in the next two weeks. And then maybe another short-term objective could be um, that they um, were able to portion their foods uh, better. So like, what would it be nutrition-wise? What could it be physical-wise? So maybe it's a long-term goal of um, you know, making the unified football team, but the short-term goals would be catching and throwing, passing and shooting, you know, stuff like that. Objectives should be observable, content related, and measurable. So something that we can measure, uh, such as you know that if you'd want them to be able to throw, how, how you know how far do you need them to throw, or how far do you need them to punt the ball, or what do you need them to be able to do? So artifacts, you're going to create a document or add art documents that show how you plan for the adaptive physical activities. This can be artifacts such as pictures, visuals, lesson plans, or assessments used. So 
for example, if you used a lesson plan and you wrote on your lesson plan some statistics, um, then add in some of your lesson plan content related to your short or long-term goals to show me that you were planning accordingly. Or you can show me some visuals or pictures of maybe some things that you would teach. Uh, or you could show some just visual symbols of what you'd want to teach. Um, or you can show me some assessments that you actually used. Um, so if you did create a checklist or if you did create journals, I want to see that as an artifact. You're going to create a task progression. So you're going to pick one skill and break it down into 10 learning steps that relate to your short-term objectives, such as, um, so for example, um, if your uh, goal was to get them to be a distance swimmer for Special Olympics, then you would go through these steps, white, yellow, orange, green, blue, purple, and brown. So if you bought the uh, book, um, the gym book, you would see these as examples. And if you haven't, uh, don't have this book, and if you have the swim book, you'll be able to see um, similar assessments like this in the book. So the books have these uh, task progressions, but you're gonna pick a skill related to your mentee um, if it's distance swim, um, this is uh, maybe your short-term goal is for them to be more socially included in the parachute and you want to break that down into 10 steps or 6 steps. So these are examples of 6 and 7 steps. I want you to try to elaborate further with 10 steps. Okay, So you're trying to create 10 learning steps that relate to your short-term objective. Then you're going to create a letter home. It'll describe the relationship you built with the mentee. Then you can describe a summary of the experience you shared with their son or daughter. Lastly, you can tell them your findings, recommendations, and suggestions on implementing your individualized action plan. This is all theoretical, so they're not going to actually get this, but you should be able to uh, write to the parent. So, for example, if you do work with athletes, you may uh, likely have to write letters to their parents or notes to their parents. So this kind of prepares you for how to um, talk to someone's child or, or son to a parent and telling them you know, what you did in lab, what you found, and what you would recommend moving forward. So here's your outline, case description in one to two paragraphs, cognitive, affective, and psychomotor domain all have their own subheading. So you're going to create subheadings for all of this, okay? And I've actually created those subheadings if you um, make sure that you check this PowerPoint out. Uh, even after this video, you're going to want to go through this again for sure if you want to do a good job in this assignment. So if you go to mo modules and you go to the template, you're going to use this template. You're going to download it. And I've pretty much helped you as far as the title page goes and how I want you to lay it out. Um, I usually don't go this far um, in advance to show all this detail but I thought this would help you out. Um, so so you put your name here, uh, your course and section number here, individualized action plan uh, fall 2018 and then here's your subheadings. So you would start you know tab indent um, the mentee I was partnered with this semester. Oops. Was Aiden. He was seven years old. He is diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. And is also diagnosed with an intellectual disability. Okay, so always saying person first. So if it's somebody with Down syndrome, he is diagnosed. Or um, let's just say Jake um, is a boy diagnosed with Down syndrome. It's Down syndrome. Sometimes you see people that say Downs, it's Down syndrome. Um, oop, I got that wrong maybe? No, it should be capital. So 
and then you know just describe your case description but make sure you use person first language after that you'll create your cognitive domain you'll talk about um, how they understand how they think and how they um, learn and what they've learned affective domain you're going to describe how they act socially and then what they did socially and then for the psychomotor domain you're going to describe what they're able to do and then describe what they've done so for preparing for inclusive activity you're going to talk about where you got the information from how did you get this information and what you used to help you with your um, pre preparation then you're going to have some artifacts using some of the assessments that you're hopefully using uh, in your lesson plans or the notes that you're taking or any type of um, artifact that shows that that's kind of you know all related and then you're going to have a task progression first name the skill so you put the skill um, here and then you create a 10 step process to reach the goal so you can create something like a table something just like this okay start with one gold and then you could start with um, sitting in chair holding onto ball raise the arms overhead throw the ball at a five foot target Eight feet high. So making sure that you're explaining, you're not just telling me sitting in a chair throwing a ball. Well, you know, for everyone it's different. So if the skill was um, um, to throw a, a medicine ball, okay, onto you, you're going to have to start with a yarn ball, okay, or a tennis ball or a volleyball so you wouldn't start with a medicine ball so you would pretty much tell me step by step what type of task progression again you can look at canvas and see those examples um, on there so lastly um, is your letter home so we've created the subheadings for you here and pretty much this is it for your individualized uh, action plan. So we have your modules. If you look at your modules, your individual individualized action plan, you should be able to upload that onto Canvas. Okay. Uh, again, if you have issues with that, I'll make sure I get that resolved. Or if for some reason it doesn't work, you can always email it to me. So never worry about that. Remember that we have teaching toolkits. Uh, use these for your lesson planning and making sure that you're using the lesson plan template for the lesson plans and making sure that you're filling in the instruction, the rules, the equipment, the environment, okay? And so if you bought the book, uh, you should be able to find uh, resources that show you what to write in there, all right? So this is the individualized action plan video. Uh, please email me if you have any questions and make sure that you uh, uh, go over this again and it's remember it's due December 3rd so you have about uh, over a month to get this done all right talk to you later